Welcome everyone, this is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today is the fourth week of Padtober. That is the hashtag for this week. Make sure you take that, put that in the comments below. That's going to give you a chance to win 15% off any of the courses that we have coming up in 2024. We did our last course engraving uh, this year with Ryan. Ryan is currently filming some more YouTube videos with our videographer... Yes videographer videographer chris uh but take that hashtag padtober put that in the comments below that'll give you a chance to win 15 percent off any of the courses that we have coming up including our event the sax smackdown and there's more information on our website about that yes. we do have a winner for today the winner is username tornado garden all right and i'm going to add a bonus winner in there in case we put this stream on facebook and that's going to be nathan Faye, congratulations, Tornado. Congratulations, Nathan. Send me an email to richrich at musicmedic.com and I will get you your discount code. The other thing I'm going to say is if you are watching this stream either this week or today or this week, if you want to get a sample of our Opus clarinet pads, you can just send me an yes. email to richrich at musicmedic.com and I'll get you your free sample. Leroy, we have one other thing, another announcement. This Friday, Saturday. This Saturday, if you are in yep. Australia, yes. uh, tune in to Ryan's clinic. He's going to be doing a virtual clinic for the Nappert Association of Band Instrument Repair Techs uh, in Australia. So if you are at the Yamaha Center in Melbourne, Australia, Saturday morning, uh, make sure, or if you're in that area, yep. tune in and go see Ryan's clinic. Uh, he's going to be doing a Neopads clinic virtually it'll be friday night here saturday morning there there yes <laughs> okay know, time changes man it's crazy yes saturday morning here next tuesday at three o'clock there <laughs> got it all right so leroy we're gonna go over the opus clarinet pads yeah. today let's go over first before we show everybody how to change one sure. let's go over what makes them special okay so the opus pads are, are different than any i'll say traditional pad because they're a synthetic pad so I'll just, you can look at the array of pads here. We have our, just like we did the last time we did some clarinet stuff, we have like our, our woven felt pads. We have our rue pads, which are right here. Cork, which is a, another completely different thing than our opus pads. So I will show you this pad, for example. So this is a traditional felt pad. It does have a little bit of a step in there. So just like any traditional felt pad, it'll have a step in there. And then the step goes inside the cup and then the, the felt side comes out. Now, for the Opus pad, and these are cool because they come in both black and white because certain brands will have like those black pads and you, and you need to match them to make it look good. So you have to like, actually have the opportunity to do that. Uh, and the, great, the cool thing with these is they're all synthetic. So they repel water, don't have to worry about them weathering, ballooning up or having a belly on it after a certain time. And the other thing that's different about these is if you, I'll show you the black ones because it's a little easier on the camera is that it is completely cylindrical. There is no step in there. So if you're measuring the pad cup and you want to figure, and you want to figure out the size of your Opus pad, it's going to be like sizing saxophone pads. So it'll be, you're going to want to use the reference of the pad cup size to the reference of the pad size you're going to be ordering. Okay, so that's the Opus pads. Now, Leroy, let's go over the tools that we need to actually install an Opus pad. Okay, so again, a, not a ton of small stuff, but a little bit of small stuff here. So I've got in my air torch here. Obviously, the instrument we'll be working on. Uh, I've got some digital calipers. I've got our yellow glue pellets. I've got some wood uh, wooden key wedges, tweezers. I've got my uh, parallel duck bell pliers, which I love. I have a, a poker device, a just kind of like a garbage little screwdriver, and we'll figure that out in a second. Regular old pad slick. Feeler gauge with the half thousandths material in there because the tell no lies material. And then our artesian pad slicks, if you want to go that direction, our spring hook, and a couple screwdrivers. Okay, excellent. So we've got our tools lined up. What's our first step here? Well, our first step, I kind of moved ahead a little bit, so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> um, but um, this pad was torn, so basically I took the key off, removed the pad. But if you look, there's also some glue in there still. So the key on this, no pun intended, but yes, at the same time, uh, is to clean is to make sure all that glue is clean outside of the pad cup. So what I'm going to do is I'll lift up my air torch. And what temperature are you using to clean glue out? I usually, for clarinet stuff, I usually like to leave it between 325 and 375. 
doesn't have to be too crazy. Okay. But I'm just heating this up and I'm going to scrape out all the old glue. And this is where the junky screwdriver comes in. So I'm just going to remove as much as I possibly can out of there. And then once, once that is nice and clean, so that is much better than it was just a couple seconds ago. I would take my digital caliper and then I'll measure the inside of that pack up just like this. So I'll just take it, measure it, and pull it out. As you can see, it's just, it's basically a 16 millimeter pack cup. And it's just a little bit over. And a nice way to do that would basically be to pull on, pull back on this and kind of turn it around to make sure that you're finding, I'll say center and you're finding a good spot. So if you can read this upside down, which if you can, great, because I can too. Uh, it's 16.12. Uh, so just over 16. Um, one thing to know about the Opus pads, which is a very useful tool, is that um, with any of these other traditional pads, they come in half millimeter increments. So like 8, 8.5, 9, 9.5. Opus pads come in quarter millimeter thick um, uh, di diameter. So like if we do a 8, 8.25, 8.5, 8.75. 8 so you get a nice snug fit on there. So this is reading a little bit over a little bit over 16, but it's not 16.25, so you got to do the nice rounding thing and go down and pick a 16. So, Leroy, when they're measuring, if they're measuring like a 16.15, you would round down to 16, but if it's a 16 point, uh, whatever, 1.9, would you round up to 16.25? I actually wouldn't uh, because if the, if the pad, because if you're doing 16.25, that might actually be too big. Okay. And then you you would have the problem of pushing it in, and it might be a little bit dished in the pad cup. So if you want to err on any side, you might want to size down maybe like a quarter of a millimeter. Okay. So if this so for example, if this was reading like fifteen point nine five, mm -hmm. I'd do like a fifteen seven five. Oh, okay, very good. And that's because the Opus pads are cylindrical; they're going to fit deeper in the pad cup, or they're going to fit in the pad cup. Yes. And you also need some room for glue in there. Right. Okay. And it's better, it's better to be like just a teeny, teeny, teeny bit small than to have it big and then have it actually not be flat. Okay. So I now have a clean pad cup. So from here, we'll just take our glue pellets, which I love. Take, take the tweezers and I'll just put some, I'll just put a few of the glue pellets in there. Usually for this size of pad cup and for the synthetic pads, I'll usually do about... Um, Usually about 10, maybe 12. Now, Leroy, while you're doing these, are, is the Opus pad, is that considered a student pad? You know what? That's a good question. And my quick answer to that is no. Um, a lot of people will say like synthetic pads are only designed for student instruments or, or something like that. Um, I've dealt with a lot of clients, a lot of players that actually sometimes prefer the synthetic pad, sometimes for the longevity of how long it lasts. Um, sometimes they're going in like in and out of like different playing venues. So, like some of them are outside and they go inside, outside, inside. So there's less weathering or anything you have to deal with with felt. You don't have to worry about with synthetic. So yeah, it, a lot of times it'll be in a student horn, but there are many I'll say professionals or higher end players that will actually request it. Okay. Yeah. Good question. So we've got our adhesive in the pad cup. Yep. I'm just going to double check my count. One, two, three, four, five, six, yep, uh, 10. So the, the awesome trick again is to make sure that you heat the bottom of the pad cup first to start melting the glue before you actually start blowing the heat inside the pad cup because I don't know about any of you guys, I really don't want to pick up a bunch of little glue pellets sure. or have them all over my floor. Now, Leroy, I want to have, while you're heating that up, yeah. I have another question. What application would these Opus pads be better for than, say, a traditional pad oh well oh okay yeah so um, when would you use these as opposed to using a traditional pad I would there's a couple different there's a couple different um, things that I would probably gear toward the first and foremost would be if you know of a student or your kid or something like that that's in marching band these things are great for for doing stuff outside 
because again, they're synthetic. You don't have to worry about them getting overly moist, have too much moisture, getting wet or anything like that. Because with the traditional pad, like a, um, like a felt pad, just like this guy, if it gets overly wet or, I mean, I hate to say if it rains on it, you know, there's a lot worse things that are, that are going to have to happen sure. if your horn gets rained on. But um, the pads, if you have a synthetic pad in there and it gets wet and rained on, you don't have to worry about the pad getting destroyed. Okay. If for a felt pad, for a traditional felt pad like this, it's going to get wet, it's going to belly, and then you're going to have to replace those. Um, that's one good thing. The other thing is some, sometimes you just want a more um, a pad that will, I'll say, last longer, depending on how it's treated. Okay. Um, because a synthetic pad like this, there is it's it's just a synthetic material. There's no wrap, nothing's wrapped on this thing. It's just basically the, the material and it's and it's cut in a cylindrical fashion. Okay. The traditional pad, like this guy, it's basically cardboard, felt, and then it's wrapped in a bladder skin. So and the bladder skin is very very thin and it can be um, delicate. So there's many many times that a student horn will come in and just from where sometimes the student will grab and put it together, the outside, so say if this was a, a traditional pad, like the outside of this area right here on the pad, the skin will basically be, almost looks like, like uh, worn or roughed up from like being touched by your hands. Okay. So that will ruin the pad and then you have to replace it. Having something like this will obviously prevent all that stuff. Do pad bugs eat? Synthetic pads. Ooh, good question, and the good answer is no. Uh -huh. So yeah, that's then that's a really uh, that's another really good thing too. So like, if for some reason you're gonna play something and you, and you don't play it very often, if you if you're if you're that guy, you're like, man, I got that Christmas gig once a year. That's <laughs> that that used to be me a long time ago. But um, yeah, I mean, if if you play your horn and then you like put it up in the closet and then next year you come around with uh, with the synthetic pad like the Opus pads, you don't have to worry about those those. I hate to say pesky, but yes. Yes. Those pesky bad, uh, pad bugs going in there and destroying your horn. Because the last thing you're going to want is like, sweet, I got a gig. And then you open up your horn and you see like all these little weevils in there. And like, you're like, well, I have to now spend X hundreds of dollars or whatever to get my pads all replaced because of that garbage happening. Yes. So yeah, that's another great tip. Another great thing. Sorry to derail you. Uh, no, no, right no right. derailing at all. That's great information. So you've got the pad installed. So pads installed. I did, I basically heated that up. And then as I pushed the pad in there, I twisted it as normal to make sure the glue gets distributed evenly. Uh, from here, I am basically going to, I'm going to back this screw off just a little bit so I can get this key in there. So bear with me. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take this screw off. So I'm just going to basically put this key back on. And once I get this guy on again, we'll put the spring back on there. And then we'll check to see how good we did putting that pad in there without having to do any leveling while it's on the body. So we'll see how we did. There's okay. There's that guy. So spring hook time. So we'll just put the spring right back in the cradle. And don't worry about the height right now. The other two keys are off. So, and then the lever is also off on that section. So don't worry about this being super high. Okay. Putting all those back together will make sure that the height is correct. So here, grab my tell no lies feeler gauge and we'll see how we did. So it is very light in the front. It is grabbing a little bit, but it's very light in the front, nice and heavy in the back. So this is an easy fix. So you can grab either either of the very nice artesian pad slicks or a regular pad slick. Either one will work. Pick up a nice heat source like the air torch here. And notice the tip that I have on there. I'll do it this way too. It is the, it is the smallest tip that you can get. I like this tip, especially doing clarinet work and other smaller woodwinds because it focuses the air in a smaller area instead of having, I'll say, the bigger the bigger amount of air going in there so it keeps the air away from the body and you don't have to worry about any part of the body getting warm. So it is grabbing a little bit more on the front which is great. Pull it just a little bit more. 
Now, Leroy, do these Opus pads have a different feel than a traditional pad? Uh, as far as playability or like... I would say, yeah, well, as you when you put your fingers down the okay. instrument and you... Um, kind of like we were talking about last week when we were doing oboes. If you have a mishmash of pads, you're going to tell the difference. Okay. Um, if you have all matching pads, and whether it be felt or the Opus pads, as long as they're leveled and seated properly, this, the feel will be solid. Will it be different? Like, like that much. Okay. Sorry, I had to make sure the right camera I was going. So like just a teeny bit. Okay. Um, and um, is it a positive and negative feel? Honestly, it's going to depend on the player. Okay. Um, I've played on synthetic pads for a lot in the past. And to be honest with you, I like the feel. There, there. I don't say. I don't say. I don't say there's anything wrong with the feel. The only thing would be, for me, if you if you push down excessively hard, and I mean excessively hard, where you're almost bending the key, you're going to feel a difference. Just, okay. be, just because the the synthetic material, if you push it harder, is going to be a little less dense than like a like a felt. But for normal playing conditions, even for little Johnny, who's in junior high, is going to push kind of hard. Okay. All is good. There is no there is no drastic difference. Okay, very good. I keep interrupting you with these. That's questions. okay. That's okay. I can handle it. <laughs> so you've been you've readjusted the pad with the feeler gauge. Yep, I readjusted the pad with feeler gauge. I used a little I used a little wooden key wedge here to hold um, to hold that pad down. I didn't push it in very hard, just enough to push push and hold that pad down, and just a little bit more to help create a little bit of a seat on there. Um, you can also use um, like a pad clamp. Um, I just, I pref at this point in time, I prefer to use the wood wedges on there. It works great. Um, the key cup is now cooled off. This is the other nice thing about the uh, about the synthetic Opus pads is you don't have to wait a long a long period of time to create a to create a seat or a seal like you would like a felt pad. So I'm just going to remove that remove that wood wedge. It's got a nice. It's got a I know this is probably kind of hard to see, but it but the, just that little bit has a nice has a nice little line of a seal on there for a seat, and then I'll basically just double check it to see how we're see how we're see how we're oh yeah that actually feels really good. So you just wedged it for just a short period of time to get a seat on there. Yep. Okay. And if you hear it, nice little pop. Mm. But yeah, it's that's the, that's another nice thing again that I like about these is that they're they're a nice, they're a firm pad. They resist water. Don't have to deal with pad bugs. And honestly, they're pretty stinking easy to put in and to level and seal. I mean, you made that look pretty easy. You know, Twenty some odd years. You know? <laughs> well, I have another. Question. I have another question though. Yeah, of course. Uh, what about bass clarinet? Can technicians oh. use the Opus, the synthetic pad, on a bass clarinet pad? Yes, great or question. Bass clarinet. Great, great question. The answer is yes. Um, obviously, we obviously these are only made up until X size, and I think it's twenty. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there's plenty. There's plenty of key cups on bass clarinet, uh, especially in the upper stack that have the the, the thinner pad cups. These work great. Um, I've also I've also used these on the trill keys and stuff. Sometimes they okay. work fine. Um, if you're worried about the thickness being an issue, you can either put a shim in there or you can use a little extra glue and float it in. Okay. I have never had a problem with that. Okay. All right. Very good. I think that is all the questions I have. Uh, shout out to everybody uh, for putting Pad Tober in the comments That's below. Right. Make That's sure you right. put Pad Tober in the comments below. That's going to give you a chance to win a discount on all, all of our courses that we mentioned in the beginning. Uh, we are going to be back next week with Ryan. He's going to show us how to install a Neo Pad. So we have this is like a five weeks of of, of, of pads, pads of Pad Tober. Pad Tober is five weeks, even though next week is November first. But we'll show you how to do uh, Neo Pad. Uh, on the November. November. Hmm. All right, folks, that's going to do it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, subscribe, and all that good stuff. We'll be back next week with Ryan. Thank you to Leroy for yeah, that excellent no demonstration. Absolutely. And until next time, happy repairing. <laughs>